Good morning. Today is Tuesday the 8th of March and it's the Tuesday in the first week of Lent. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Look upon your family, Lord, that through the chastening effects of bodily discipline our minds may be radiant in your presence with the strength of our yearning for you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 55. Thus says the Lord, As the rain and the snow come down from the heavens and do not return without watering the earth, making it yield and give growth to provide seed for the sower and bread for the eating, so the word goes out from my mouth, does not return to me empty, without carrying out my will and succeeding in what it was sent to do. The word of the Lord. The Gospel is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6. Jesus said to his disciples, In your prayers do not babble as the pagans do, for they think that by using many words they will make themselves heard. Do not be like them. Your Father knows what you need before you ask him. So you should pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be held holy. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we have forgiven those who are in debt to us. And do not put us to the test, but save us from the evil one. Yes, if you forgive others their failings, your heavenly Father will forgive you yours. But if you do not forgive others, your Father will not forgive your failings either. The Gospel of the Lord Suppose you could sum up by saying today's readings are about words. first reading from Isaiah compares the rain and the snow that falls on the earth but which leads to growth, crops, food compared to the Word of God and the Word of God is always achieves what it sets out to do. There are perhaps two levels of meaning to this. There's certainly the ordinary word that uh, what God says is for happens. God said he would save the Israelites from the Egyptians and he did. But there's a deeper meaning to the word, word here and that is in creation. Um, a number of the wisdom texts talk about the word of God being at, there at the beginning of creation, rejoicing in creation along with wisdom. And there's quite a connection between word and wisdom. But here we're talking about the word um, that is there in creation. And it ties in very much with St. John's Gospel. Um, if you remember the opening verses are, In the beginning was the word, and the word was God. The word was with God, and the word was God. It was with God at the beginning of creation. So here in John's Gospel, the word is precisely Jesus Christ himself. And so this idea of the word that carries out what he promises is precisely applied by Christians to Jesus Christ. He is the word that does not come down to earth and leave it empty. He does what he set out to do, restore and reconcile us to the Father so that we have a loving relationship and that we are children of the Father in his family. The Gospel begins with, when you pray, don't use a, a babble of words, but just use simple words. And then Jesus gives the example uh, and get, teaches them the prayer, the Our Father. And each version of the Our Father in each of the, the Gospels is slightly different, but here in Matthew, it's what I'd call three plus three. There's three petitions to God, and then three petitions to, for us. Three petitions to, me, to God are, Hallowed be your name, thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This idea of respecting God as Holy One, as our Creator, and whose will we want to fulfill. Uh, we hear the same phrase in the um, agony in the garden, not my will, but thy will be done. That we carry out God's will in creating the world that God wants for us. A world where we love each other, respect creation, and do the best we can 
to make this world a right place. A world that's a word that's so challenging to us when we see evil and things going desperately wrong in the world at the moment. The second three petitions are to do with us. The first we ask is for our daily bread, the food and all the things we need to live our human lives. Second is that we're called to forgive others as um, for God to forgive us our debts as we forgive the debts of others. Um, it's a big one this because so often we want to be forgiven but can still be angry with other people. We've got to realise that to be integral we've got to combine the two together. We can't expect God to forgive us if we don't forgive others. The last one is not being put to the test. Um, it's a better translation or a better way of putting it than lead us into temptation. God doesn't lead us into temptation. We pray that, that we wouldn't be put to the test. Um, but delivered from evil and it's certainly something we pray today not to be put to the test but to be delivered from evil so all these words whether it's the word of God Jesus Christ or the word coming from God that makes the earth that waters the earth and gives us food or the word of God that teaches us to pray and of course there's an allusion to the word of God being the seed that's planted and grows and the dangers of some seed falling into the wrong ground. We hope we're, we're, we're proper earth and that the seed will grow to full, full ear of corn in us, the full life that Jesus promises us in the kingdom of God. We turn to our bidding prayers. The response is, Christ, bread of life, strengthen us. Let us bless Christ, who is our bread from heaven. Christ, bread of life, strengthen us. Lord, give us a share in the bread of the Eucharist. Fill us with the blessings of your paschal sacrifice. Christ, bread of life, strengthen us. May we take your word to our hearts in faith and obedience. Yield a harvest in us through our perseverance. Christ, bread of life, strengthen us. Make us eager to fulfil your plan for the world, that the Church may spread the great message of peace. Christ, bread of life, strengthen us. We have sinned, Lord, we have sinned. Take away our guilt by your saving grace. Christ, bread of life, strengthen us. And we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Look with favour on your family, Lord, and as at this time we restrain the desires of the body, may our hearts burn with love of you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All the best. Have a good day.